Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuir. In this class, we will discuss about uh, syntax directed translation for a concrete to abstract syntax tree. In our last class, we clearly discussed about what SDT means, uh, how we uh, how we are doing uh, uh, syntax directed translations uh, in semantic analysis phase. Uh, so this is a continuation class. This is an example for better understanding of syntax directed translation. So please watch our previous classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, uh, we will understand syntax directed translation for concrete to abstract syntax tree. This this is the grammar which we are using e tends to e plus t e tends to t t tends to t star f t tends to f f tends to id this is the regular grammar which we are using from previous 10 to 15 videos so that's why we are not explaining this this grammar is going to identify expressions assume that this is the example 2 plus 5 into 6 this is the expression if you want to evaluate this expression whether it is syntactically correct or not we are using different techniques ll1 recursive descent parsing uh, whatever technique we follow this is the way it is going to elaborate uh, it is going to expand uh, e is going to expand with e plus t e, t e is expanded with t t tends to f f tends to id here id means from our input it's 2 value 2 then it is going to check for plus then it is going to elaborate all these things this one we call it as concrete syntax tree so during the syntax analysis phase, this expansion is going to be done, but we are not at means the program is executing in this fashion, leftmost derivation fashion, top down, left to right derivation, uh, derivation way, it is going to exp execute, the program is executing like that. But remember, we are not at constructing any tree up to now. In our previous examples, we did not constructed any tree. We showed this tree, but this is the way the program is executing. That is the point you have to understand. In this class, in this class, we are going to construct a tree for this execution. What's the tree? For this execution, we are going to generate an abstract syntax tree like this. Plus 2 star symbol 5, 6. This means it's a binary search assume that it's a binary tree this binary tree has to be constructed during the execution of a syntax analysis phase during the execution of syntax analysis we have to construct this abstract tree so from this we can easily understand first we have to do 5 multiplied by 6 the result has to be given to 2 plus so that is the use of this abstract syntax tree how to do that in our last class we discussed that for the given grammar in order to write syntax analysis phase we are writing context free grammar for this context free grammar if you add any semantic conditions we call it a we call it as syntax directed definition that syntax directed definition is helping us to do the translation now let's try to understand for this grammar we are adding some semantic conditions these conditions will help us in generating in constructing the binary tree that required for our expression let's try to understand what this semantic conditions means we'll go from the bottom first we'll go we will take an example we'll uh, elaborate this first one then you will automatically understand the remaining things very easily let's take the same example two plus five into six how it is going to execute we have written the context free grammar we have uh, we have written the recursive decent parsing for this context free grammar that recursive decent parsing is going to execute during that execution we need to add this extra semantic conditions okay during the execution e tends to e plus t e is going to elaborate t t is going to elaborate f f is going to check for id here id means id dot lex value so what is the lex value two value whenever this f tends to id has been finished means this production has been finished means the function that we have written for f for checking syntax analysis has been finished after that we are going to add this extra code the 
condition for that code has been given here that is what semantic condition means what's this condition says is f dot ptr ptr is an attribute from the programmatic point of view ptr is an variable that holds some value here we are using this attribute to hold the address of the address value so what's that address it is going to generate a node node means from data structures when we are you know data structures when we discuss about binary search tree we are creating nodes root node root node is having left and right right sub nodes that is what node means here we are calling a function node this function node is going to create a data structure like this node structure like this in this node structure we have to place id dot lex value what is id dot lex value here 2 so place 2 here and what is the left left side left uh, sub 3 uh, left side uh, value uh, left child value is null right child value is null that is how we have created a node whenever we encountered f tends to id a new node is creating in that new node we are placing the value lex value at that position when uh, this is executed what's the lex value 5 when this is executed what's the lex value 6 so here the, at this point of time it is executing 2 that's why the value is 2 and the left child is null and the right child is null assume that this node is assigned a memory location 500 this 500 value is placed in ptr that is why we are using this attribute ptr to save the value whenever this t tends to f has been completed see what's our semantic condition says f dot ptr is assigned to t dot ptr so that's why t dot ptr is equal to 500 that is how that is how that is how it is going to execute whenever this e tends to t has been finished t dot ptr is assigned to e dot ptr t dot ptr is assigned to e dot ptr the same way here you will get the left node and right node address we create a new node and assign the left and right address that is how it is going to execute so that's why whenever e plus t has been finished what it has written here e dot ptr is equal to create a new node what's the new node is creating it is going to place plus in the middle left left child is e1 dot ptr the address which we got left address t dot ptr the right address node that is how it is going to create the same way t dot ptr t1 t tends to t1 star f here in order to distinguish this right side t and left side t it is given a new name t1 here also it is given e1 so t dot ptr is equal to node of what's the middle value it is going to place in the node star value and left value is t1 dot ptr right value is f dot ptr this is the so let's try to understand the from the example point of view See the same example whenever it is going to execute it is going to execute e tends to t e plus t e tends to t t tends to f f tends to id whenever this has finished it is creating a node and this node is given an address value 500 this 500 is given to f dot ptr this is given to t dot ptr this is given to e dot ptr then it is going to check for plus then it is expanding this t f id whenever it got here this 600 this new node has been created with value 5 uh, into means null value null value left is null uh, right is null and uh, it is given a memory location 600 600 is given to f dot ptr 600 is given to t dot ptr that is given that is used to combine here let's try to understand after that it is going to check for star then it is going to execute f tends to id a new node has been created the value is 6 left pointer is null right pointer is null 700 the address of this node is given as 700 the 700 is given to f dot ptr t star f whenever it is going to finish it is going to execute this condition t dot ptr is equal to node of it is going to create t1 dot ptr uh, star f dot ptr so it is going to create a new node the middle value is star and the left hand side is the 600 that got from here means left subtree is pointing to this node right subtree is pointing to this 
left subtree is pointing to this node right subtree is pointing to the this node this is how we are constructing an abstract syntax tree the final abstract syntax tree looks like this see 500 is given 800 600 700 xx null value null value so we are in the in the during the syntax analysis phase we are adding some semantic conditions with these conditions we are going to do some syntax directed translations required for our semantic and other phases what's the next phase it's after the semantic analysis phase three address code generation so the we can uh, apply this uh, semantic conditions this is one of the example for better understanding of syntax directed translation hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you